they said unto you that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord was sitting upon a throne. He was high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. How many see him high and lifted up in this place today? He said, and above them stood the seraphim. Each one of them had the six wings. With two, they covered their face. With two, they covered their feet. With two, they did fly. And they cried one to another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Can I just say this before we go any further? Six is the number of men. The seraphim were crying one to another, Holy, holy, holy. And then there was a mere reflection of the glory of God that they were seeing between themselves. But the Bible says that the post of the door moved at the voice of them that cried, and the smoke filled the temple. I believe what happens when we look at one another and we tell one another how great God is and how holy He is, if somebody begins to move in the spirit, the post begins to move, spiritual structure begins to happen, and then the glory of the Lord moves in and fills the house. One more time, take a stand up, look at somebody. But after 
around that time, he, uh, I joined the First Apostolic Church, uh, was married in the First Apostolic Church, served as youth leader, youth pastor, assistant pastor. I think about every ministry that was here, pastor, I served in one capacity or another, and seen great things happen, and uh, we have cried over many memories, over many things. We laughed, we cried, but the main thing is we grew. And, and, and we were unified. And any, any time the church went through a hard time, it just seemed to bring us closer and, and, and unite us. And I remember the church in Francis Avenue just had uh, just a, a marvelous move of God. I, I still think about that. Even though this is an awesome church, we're here. We have grown. We're expanding. God has done a great work by providing just such a beautiful essence and edifice, and there's room to grow. But on Francis Avenue, that, that is my true roots. And um, just recalling the great move of God, the great services there. I remember looking at my pastor and, and his energy, his zeal for the Lord, his excitement, and saying, that's what I want to be like. I want to have that same faith, that same pride, that same stamina. And Pastor, I, I believe I can say that you that has rubbed off on me, and I, and I thank you for leaving such a, a lasting legacy. And then in 1994, and, and I'm, I'm skipping a lot of different things here, but uh, moving to 1994 when we purchased this building by faith and uh, overwhelmed by the great things that God has done. But really, folks, it's not the building that represents the church, but you are the church. I said you are the church. It's the members of the body. That make up this apostolic church. And um, this church is an inspiration to me. It has been my, my lifeblood. It has been my, uh, just, I can trace myself back whenever I feel that I've lost my way. To trace myself back to this church. Remember my beginnings. Remember a man of God that believed in me. And, and, and that, and put uh, a lot of things into me. And a man of God that was faithful and was a great example and a great role model. And again, I want to give honor to my pastor today. And I want to say congratulations, 60 years. I realize it didn't start with you, but it started with Bishop P. Bright. If I can say about Bishop P. Bright, I may remember Bishop P. Bright. And, and a man was and so faithful. I remember him just getting up, and he would always get up and say, Well, glory. That was one of his famous things to say. Uh, and, and excited and starting this work and then carrying on and passed the torch on to his son in 1977. And here we are today in 2011. What are we going to do? We're going to win souls for Jesus Christ. And we're reaching out in the community. I want to say that I believe that Mishawaka is the Jerusalem of this area. I believe it's the hub. I believe First Apostolic Church is the Jerusalem in this community. I have always believed that. This is a church that believes in truth, preaches truth, stands on truth. But I want to say that if, if Mishawaka is the Jerusalem, then I want to say that Laporte is the Antioch. Yeah. Amen. Because what we have done, Pastor, the work didn't just, just start here, but it actually passed on into Laporte in the and expanded its borders. So when you talk first apostolic church, you got to continue, you have to add the door church in there. Right. In the beginning, it was actually the end of 1996, uh, beginning of 19, uh, January of 1997, that I took over a pastorate of the door in Laporte. It was a United Pentecostal church. It wasn't called the door church at that time, but we named it after the Lord uh, spoke to me and showed me a vision of a great door opening up, a great light coming from within, dissipating the darkness around it, and of course that's what Laporte means, the door. So whenever we talk about First Apostolic Church, make sure that you include Laporte in there, because really it's just all one church. At least that's my feeling about it. And the same revival spirit that's in this church, the same harvest spirit has carried on into the city of Laporte this year alone. We've seen 26 people get baptized and 20 filled with the Holy Ghost. But that's nothing to shout about, and I don't know what it is. But that's the Excited, it's still in my mind. But Saturday afternoon, we got a call from uh, a lady that said um, uh, there was a sister in the hospital that was dying. It was a man in our church. It's his sister. She's bedridden. She's dying. Her kidney's shutting down, and she wants the Holy Ghost. She had been baptized in our church a few years ago, but because of her illness, we hadn't seen her. After that, we went to the hospital. Brother Robinson and I went to the hospital, talked to her, and I said, "Today, we're not going to we're not going to pray for the Holy Ghost." 
She looked at me and I said, we're going to receive the Holy Ghost. We're not going to pray for it. We're going to receive it. Jesus poured it out 2,000 years ago. All you have to do is receive it. Within two minutes, she had been trying to get the Holy Ghost for seven years. But within two minutes, she got killed her. And she began to speak another tongue. And the Spirit of God gave me another. Can I talk about it just a little bit? The whole nursing staff heard it. The hospice staff that just pronounced her bill of death heard it. The whole floor of the hospital heard it. And when they began to get excited about it, God did a great work. God did a fantastic work. That's an extension of what happened here in Mishawaka in First Apostolic Church. After the Lord killed her, I said, let's pray for your healing. She said, no. She goes, Pastor, I want to go home. The Lord showed me a place that he prepared for me, and I'm ready to go. I don't want to be healed. God showed me a beautiful place, and that's where I want to go. Yeah. And so as we left the room, didn't know this happened, but about five minutes later, one of the nurses came that heard all the commotion going on, stood there, and in her face as white as a sheet because she felt the power of God and knew something had happened. She looked down at this girl that God filled with the Holy Ghost and all she said was, Honey, honey, you got it. You got it. You got it. Let's give God some praise. I'm telling you that God is doing a great work. God is doing a great work in 2011. But it all started. And then because of the man that had a vision. It all started as Bishop B. Bright had a burden for this city and then moved into this city. And from then on, the rest is history. There been many transitions, there been many changes, there been many phases that have happened throughout the course of, our, of the history of First Apostolic Church. Some people have come and some have left, but always there's always been new people that come in. And so we are a unified body. Great things happening at First Apostolic Church, the Hispanic ministry. That excites me. Brother and Sister Magine had, been, had done a work in the port, but it was time for them to move here because you had a Hispanic work. They fit right in. I love that with all my heart. I know that you do too. And so First Apostolic, and I'm sure somebody will elaborate on this, but First Apostolic Church touching the, the Hispanic community. Of course, this didn't happen really until after we had left and when the Hispanic ministry could get to start and now it's in full bloom here are great things and so I want to greet my, my Spanish my uh, brothers and sisters in Jesus could you give them a hand as well as part of the heritage of the first Amen. and again I tell you if I, was, if I could go on and on and on but I would be up here for hours but I want to truly say that Mishawaka, First Apostolic Church, we love you in Jesus' name. Continue the great work. If we bind together and we unify, amen, spiritual structure will come in. Amen. And the glory of the Lord will fill this church and inadvertently fill and spill out into this city. Let's go ahead and give the Lord one more hand of praise today. I will go ahead and stand with you. I want to bring the pastor of this church up at this time, a man that we all love and respect. Would you give a warm welcome to Pastor Jesus Christ? 